G'day Freo fans and welcome to our second member Q&A of 2022. We're virtual today, but that won't stop us putting all of your questions to people that you want to hear from. Joining our show today is our AFL senior coach, Justin Longmuir, JL. Thanks for your time today. Good to be on board, Brett. Firstly, the preseason matches, they're done and dusted. Uh, the attention now switches to round one. Can you give us a bit of a brief indication on how you think we're placed with that first game just around the corner? I think we're yeah, we're placed pretty well. Um, you know, the performance on the weekend probably didn't probably wasn't as good as our first performance against West Coast, but I think that's what we needed. We we needed a um, hard fought, close game, um, and it's a really good indicator for our players that we're not where we want to be yet. So, um, yeah, a lot of our players have had really strong pre seasons. Uh, yeah, we're getting players back at the right time and, yeah, we're starting to gel as, as a group. So, um, you know, we're not going to be our finished product in round one, but no team will be. All right, let's get stuck into our member questions. The first comes from 21-year member Vince Costantino. Vince says, this season it's been pleasing to note the general increase in player depth leading to competition for places in the match day squad. Would you like to see more competition amongst the forwards group? Oh, not really. Um, I think we've got healthy competition in the forward line group. Um, you know, we probably still haven't settled on our uh, preferred structure down there. We're not, we haven't locked it away in cement. Like, um, you know, we could possibly play three tools. Josh Tracy's doing a good job um, at Peel, working on his game and fitness. And, um, you know, we're at Sam Sturt as well um, at Peel at the moment with Joel Weston um, and a few others with Joel and uh, Jaya Miss coming back into um, match sim um, the last couple of weeks. So I think we've got good competition for spots down there. Uh, I think we're functioning really well as a forward line. We've got um, a lot of players, especially our small forwards, uh, um, really flexible as well with the roles they can play in that forward line. So um, I think there's competition for spots down there. Um, and yeah, no one's no one's feeling comfortable with their position and their spot in the team. So um, yeah, it's tracking well. Fremantle member Greg Winning has the next one. He asks, "How does the club develop more consistency in performances? Is it the psychology of a young group who haven't yet had a grasp on the effort required week in week out, or is it something else?" I think it's the psychology of our group, <clears throat> and uh, I think. Um, yeah, we've done a fair bit of work over the pre-season on developing consistent routines. Uh, I, I think you'll find the most consistent uh, players in the AFL are really consistent with what, what they do week to week and um, winning or losing doesn't really play into that. Um, they really understand what they need to do to prepare for a game and um, some of our younger players are maybe um, still finding their way with that. So it's a little bit about education um, but, you know, trial and error is going to play its part as well. So trying to fast track is, uh, tr fast track that as much as we can, but uh, we're just going to have to be a little bit patient at times. Our next question comes from Aaron Lieback. It already seems that our foot skills have improved this season. Has that been a main improvement area that you've been looking at over the summer? Yeah, we do a lot of work on our skill. Um, we do a lot of work on our ability to provide good options for the ball carrier and do a lot of work on you know this sort of shape uh, we want to play in so all those things help um, execution through you know better easier decision making and uh, making the options just clearer so yeah we've, we've done a lot of work um, we feel like we've put our players in situation that allows their skill at training to transfer to games and um, hopefully we see a continued improvement in our skill level. 22-year member Mike Arnold has a question. He says, Hi, Justin. It's no secret that injuries along with inconsistent form have hampered our progress up the ladder in recent years. Uh, you mentioned previously the club has put in place steps to help reduce this problem. Could you expand on that one? Oh, there's there's not one thing. There's, there's a lot of different things that play into um, injury prevention. Uh, there's a lot of stuff we've int introduced in the gym with our um, pre-training routines and, and the practices we go through to warm our players up and get them ready for training through to nutrition, um, through to the way we train and, and, the, and the type of running we do. So, um, you know, we've also tried to train at Fremantle Oval a little bit to give our players, um, you know, a different ground to, to, to train at, which is a different surf, surface, obviously. So 
Um, there's never one thing, and that's why these things are always a little bit tricky, but I feel like a lot of the things we've put in place in, around those areas I've spoken about have been a benefit, and our players have really embraced all aspects. Peter Diamond, a 20-year member, has written in. He says, why not play Sean Darcy and Lloyd Meek together and use our best two emerging ruckmen to give our midfield first use? Yeah, well, uh, it's about team balance, and we play Sean in the ruck for about 80% of the time, and we're looking for someone to come in and fill that 20% of the game time um, in the ruck, but their secondary role has to be as a primary forward, and um, we feel like Lobby's um, that player for us at the moment. Um, things can change, though. Uh, we feel like Miki's really improved over <clears throat> the past you know, pre-season or, or past couple of pre-seasons, and he's really challenging those guys for, for game time. Um, been really impressed with the way he's, he's rucked um, over the pre-season. Um, and he's narrowed the gap on those two. So, um, yeah, it adds to our competition for spots, which, um, you know, we have all over the ground at the moment. It's a great problem to have. We've got some questions addressing the multiple lines on the field. So we've broken it up a bit. We'll start with the forwards. Uh, Fremantle member David Taylor is up next. He says, I noticed good method going forward in the two practice games this preseason. Uh, what has been Jamie Graham's influence since coming on board? Yeah, he's brought a um, real team philosophy to our forward line and made it really clear that it's not about individuals. It's about um, yeah us as a forward line working well together and um, producing you know, good options for the for the mids and the, and the backs. Uh, I think um, hopefully you've noticed that. You know, some of our forward craft has taken a step forward. Um, I think you know, Michael Fredericks um, is a good example of that. Um, he's added some forward craft to his speed and it's resulted in, resulted in him taking marks inside 50. But I think all of our forwards are working really well together and providing really good options um, for the ball carrier and they've really bought into a mentality of um, being you know, a, a group of six looking to score rather than you know, six individuals. So. Um, it's going to be a work in progress, uh, but yeah, early signs are good. Next up is Hayden Lowther, a 24-year member. He says, hello, JL, where is Sam Sturt at? Is it a case of competition for spots? And further to that, the goal kicking, uh, again, was a, a slight issue in our Amy clash with West Coast. Was it highlighted over the preseason? Yeah, Sturdy has probably been hampered a little bit with his body over the preseason. Um, he's missed a little bit of preseason um, compared to some of our other forwards through the injury he sustained at the end of last year. Um, he's back um, going 100% now. He's played good, uh, good, good footy and, and full game time at Peel the last couple of weeks, and now he's just yeah competing for a spot in our forward line. I do like his skill set. Um, he brings you know really good speed and. Um, really good aerial um, to his role. So, yeah, we'll look to give him an opportunity if his form, um, yeah, um, yeah, he maintains at the level it is. Um, uh, as for our goal kicking, uh, yeah, it let us down a little bit on the weekend. Um, but I'm not, I'm not too concerned um, just yet over it. Oh, we've done a mountain of work over the pre-season on our routines um, and our players have been really purposeful with the way we've practised our goal kicking. So... <clears throat> um, yeah, we try not to get too reactive on on um, an event, which the weekend was. Previous to that, we've kicked really well at in our intra clubs and and really well um, in our first preseason game. So, um, yeah, I trust the work we've done in that area. On to our defenders, JL Rob Cannon, a 22 year member, would like to know if all key defenders are fit. Would Griffin Logue ever be considered for a defensive mid or tagger type role? Oh, maybe down the track. Um, yeah, we're just trying to get him to become a consistent um, back at the moment. And it's really some an area of the ground we need to get some continuity in. Um, last year, we were, we were, it was a bit of a rotating door in our back line. So I think it's really important to be a successful team. You have you know a core group of, back, of backs, um, maybe five or six, that play week in, week out with each other. And we see Griff as an important part to that. Um, he's got the ability to play tall and small. So we'll keep um, persisting with that at the moment. Um, you know, we've got good depth in our midfield as well. So we see him as a, yeah, as a back at this stage. 
Jude Pearson, a 21-year member, says, Hi, JL. Can you please tell me how Brandon Walker is tracking? Tracking really well. Um, he probably missed um, a period of pre-season before Christmas that others didn't, <clears throat> hence the reason why he's come through um, Peel with the, with the, with the Peel Intra Clubs. His form's been really strong and he's banging the door down. Um, yeah, so if an opportunity presents, we'll, we'll look to get him into the side. Um, he's definitely not out of the question for round one. Um, yeah, he, he looks like he's improved his footy from last year and we're really excited about what he can um, produce. And a couple of midfield questions here. Ryan Williams, a two-year member, says, Hey, Justin, I was wondering why Travis Collier never gets a run in the guts. He has the body for it and the speed. Surely he would help get the ball out of there. Yeah, uh, I can understand the question. We, we do play him on the wing quite a bit and we, we really like what he offers us up on the wing with his with a lot of different things, to be honest. His leadership, his speed, um, and his kicking ability. Um, yeah, we've probably got other mids ahead of him for the on the, the inside stuff, um, but that doesn't say that we don't we won't look at it down the down down the track. Fremantle member Corey Rowe has the all important question, asking, "Hey Justin, just wondering if Nat Fife will be back for the first round." Yeah, at this stage he's, he's in the frame. Um, he's pushing hard for round one. Um, he'll have to probably come through the next couple of weeks without any interruptions to be able to achieve that, but we think he can. So, yeah, we'll have to wait till round one in selection, but he's tracking in the right direction at this stage. Some general questions to finish off today. Deb Kavanagh, a nine-year member with the club, has asked, what do you consider to be the most important skill that a modern player should have? Oh, uh, it's, a good, it's a really good question. Um, probably on field, I'd say um, the ability to win their own contests. It's, the modern game is such a contest-driven game, so <clears throat> it doesn't matter where you play, contest is important. So, um, you know, whether you're a tall forward and you're winning contested marks or, or being able to follow up at ground level and winning contested ball at ground level, every role has a contest component to it which is really important. I'd say holistically, it's probably um, the mental toughness and resilience, and it's probably boil that down to the focus of being able to focus on what you can, con what you can control as a player and focus on what's important for you to be able to, you know, have a really strong growth mindset. Um, you know, there's so many distractions and pressures on the modern day football that can drag you away from that. Um, and the players who have the ability to, um, refocus um, on what's important and, and stay really process orientated um, tend to improve the most. 14 year member Damien Del Pizzo has written in asking when you're choosing the medical sub on game day, is it based on the most versatile player or who you think is the 23rd best available player? Uh, I would say versatility plays a big role in, the, um, in that. Um, yeah, and someone who can play probably midfield, I mean, the game is one I lost through the middle of the ground um, in a really contested contested game. So if you can get some fresh energy um, on there um, through the middle of the ground, that's a, that's a bonus late in games um, as the midfielders fatigue. Um, for that to happen, though, you probably need an um, option through your middle of the ground to be able to push players out onto a wing or push some of your mids um, to other areas of the ground if the injury doesn't happen in, the, in, in, in that area. So... Um, yeah, I'd, I'd say either flexibility or, or a midfielder is where we sort of tend to lean. One here from Advaith Suresh, a two-year member. He says, hey, JL, love the way you go about it. In your coaching philosophy, how do you strike the correct balance between trusting our processes and adjusting potential weaknesses in our game plan? Always always looking to improve um, our game plan. So we all, we're always constantly adjusting and um, shifting our focus to certain areas um, of improvement or strength. So that's a con continuing thing. The big changes probably happen at the end of the year when you sit down and <clears throat> do a bit of a deep dive and reflect um, and you make bigger changes there. Um, and we're constantly adjusting um, for what the opposition throw at us. And that's not necessarily um, making wholesale changes to your game plan, but I'd, I'd probably call it adjusting your focuses um, week in, week out to what the opposition bring. Um, it always comes back to what we're doing, but 
um, some of the things that we're doing is adjusted by what the opposition brings. So, um, yeah, constantly adjusting and, and making, you know, um, changes week to week, but always trying to have a, a mindset on our footy and, and, and being proactive as well. Our final question for all today, a nine-year member from Albany, Sasha Russell. She's asked, what was your most favourite win since the start of being coach for our amazing Fremantle boys? Uh, there's probably a couple. Um, I think whenever we were challenged <clears throat> last year, I thought our players showed really good grit and um, really, uh, yeah, toughed out probably four or five close games last year, which were really pleasing. I think the the St Kilda game a couple of years ago where we came back from a fair deficit, I think it was 40-odd points, and, and won on the road. Uh, at the end of what was a, a large away swing, I think we were away from home for our first seven or eight games that year, and that was the last game um, of that hub. And, um, yeah, I was really um, proud of the way the players fought back from you know a pretty... Um, big deficit. So, yeah, there's a number of, of good wins. Um, as a senior coach, you send, tend to hold on to the losses more than the wins, but um, there's a few there that have um, made me really proud of our playing group. Justin, thank you for your candid insights today and for tackling our member questions head on. I've loved chatting with you. We hope for the members watching that you've gained some valuable learnings from JL. Well, before we do go, I'd like to make mention it's been a big week for the footy club, particularly with a new partnership that we'd like to welcome. Justin, can you tell us a bit more about that one? Yeah, we've got Boomer Home Loans on board as the official coaches sponsor. Um, yeah, looking forward to working with them over the next few years and great to have their support. Certainly is. That's it for our latest member Q&A. Thank you for watching and thank you, JL. And as always, go Freya. Welcome on board to our new partner, Boomer Home Loans. Here's to being an okay Boomer.